Hey guys, today's presentation is looking at nutrition and the way that it enhances um, performance and how it enhances recovery as well. So first of all, um, when we look at nutrition, there's a few basic needs that everyone has. So there's carbs, fats and proteins, which are the energy. Then you've got vitamins and minerals, which um, help with body functions. And then you've got water and fiber as well, which are supplements. So today we're just going to have a look at the first three. So the first three um, energy fuels. So just looking at carbs, fats and proteins. So starting off with carbs, um, they're considered probably the most important fuel when it comes to exercising because they're the ones that are the most easily utilized and um, also called upon the most when exercising. Um, so you've got two versions of um, carbohydrates. One is glucose, which is the form um, found readily available in the blood, it's the smaller version, and then you've got the stored or the larger version called glycogen, and that's found in the muscles in the liver. And when the body needs um, more, ex or when it needs more fuel for exercising, um, it converts the glycogen into glucose. So it should make up roughly 65%, 55 to 65 percent of the diet. Um, some athletes will obviously try and put more in, um, especially when they're carb loading, which we'll get to later. Um, and just looking at the intake recommendations there, um, pre-event, um, you should have a meal probably um, not too high in GI, um, one to four hours prior to the event. Um, a lot of athletes find if they have a heavy meal just before the event, they feel like they're um, bloating or, you know, digestion is taking over. So generally they'll have like a little snack of lollies or something just before the event. Um, and that's one to four grams of um, carbohydrate per kilogram of body mass. So if the um, athlete say weighed 60 kilos, that would be between um, say 60 and 240 grams of, um, of carbohydrate. So then during training um, and events that are generally over an hour, if it's under an hour, there's not really a need for extra glucose because the body seems to be able to store enough for that. Um, generally, if it's over an hour or say over an hour and a half, um, then you should be taking about 30 to 60 grams um, of carbohydrate per hour. Um, so that will obviously depend on the event um, and will depend on the athlete and how well they cope. And then post event um, or immediately after the event, it's recommended that the athlete takes about 50 to 80 grams of high GI foods um, within the first 15 to 30 minutes. Now, this doesn't mean that they go and eat a whole big bowl of pasta. It means that they might have things like um, the um, sports um, gels, so the carbohydrate gels, which are very, very high in glucose, um, and also things like sports drinks, um, so Gatorades, those sort of things. So carbohydrates that are easily consumed. And then in the following two hours after that, um, then you're looking at something like 25 to 50 grams of moderate GI. So generally what happens is uh, the further away from the event you get, the lower the GI that you need. So basically it's really important to boost back up those stores straight away with high GI and get it absorbed in really quickly. Make sure those stores don't deplete too much. And then um, gradually you can ease up on that and then go back to low GI foods to maintain a regular level of carbohydrates. So when you look at um, GI, which is something that I mentioned earlier, it means glycemic index. And basically um, what scientists have done have uh, ranked quite a lot of foods, not every single food, but quite a lot of foods on how well they or how much they affect the blood sugar uh, response. So um, generally uh, what they had to do was, um, I think it was they would feed or like 100 grams of a particular food to a person and measure their um, blood sugar response before and after and you know basically um, uh, pure sugar was the limit that you could get to and so anything below that sort of ranks so you've got 100 which is at the top which is glucose and then anything down from there all the way down to zero is where it lies on the index so um, obviously it's it's pretty tricky to feed people particular foods to get a um, blood response which is perhaps why you you know you might wonder why particular foods um, don't have a GI rating it's because they, they might be just too tricky to test so if you have a food that's higher on the um, glycemic index then that means um, it generally has 
lower levels of starch, fat, um, protein, fiber, all the things that sort of add bulk to it. Um, because if they have low levels, then that's less um, digestion that the body has to undergo. Therefore, the um, carbohydrates or the sugars can get absorbed more readily, um, and then it will affect the blood glucose levels more quickly. The same reverse, so um, a low GI food will mean generally that there's more of those starch, fats, fibers, and proteins, um, because the body has to digest, it takes its time, um, and therefore the food goes through the system slower and therefore it gets absorbed slower um, and therefore its effect on the uh, blood glucose levels are not as um, intense. So um, when an athlete considers GI in terms of their diet, um, they'd be looking at um, benefiting from high GI foods immediately after the event and also during because that um, is enabling the glucose to get into the bloodstream as quickly as possible and then they can use it as fast as they need to for their event. Whereas um, later on during recovery, um, they're probably better off to have uh, lower GI foods so it's not spiking their blood sugar levels too, too often. Okay, so there's another concept that you need to be aware of and that's carbohydrate loading. So um, it sort of comes in conjunction with the tapering um, during a training program. So what will generally happen is uh, 36 to 72 hours prior to an event, um, an athlete will reduce their um, exercise or their training sessions, um, but then at the same time, they will increase their levels of carbohydrate consumption. Now this can actually increase the stores in the muscle by 50 to 100%. So that could mean, um, you know, an athlete might be able to run for another five minutes at the same intensity than another athlete. And that's a massive advantage. Um, a lot of these um, nutritional, um, I suppose, strategies, they, they usually only make um, differences, say, between zero and 10% difference to an athlete. But that's always just enough to win a race if the other athlete has done exactly the same preparation but has minus a particular strategy. Um, now, with carbohydrate loading, it's really um, probably more beneficial for athletes who do events over 90 minutes. So those who are doing mar marathons, um, triathlons, cycling events, Tour de France, those sort of things. It's not really going to benefit anyone that has to exercise for less than that time because uh, scientists have sort of found that the body stores enough um, glucose and glycogen and um, if you train properly and you um, have an adequate diet um, that you need to be an athlete, um, then that will be enough for an event under 90 minutes. Right, so there's also um, using carbohydrates for recovery. Um, there's a particular term called carbohydration, and that's basically just meaning that you rehydrate and you refuel at the same time. And basically that's a sports drink. So Gatorade, Powerade is carbohydration. Um, it's nothing new. And basically they find that um, if you have water and carbohydrates at the same time, so in the form of a sports drink plus some electrolytes, uh, you tend to increase your chances of um, or increase the ability to rehydrate and also the fuel gets in a bit more easily. Um, there's also another strategy that athletes use which is consuming protein along with the um, glucose. So basically what happens is when you have protein as well as the carbohydrates, um, it actually stimulates or amplifies the insulin response. So that means that if there's insulin, it's going to store the glucose more and therefore you're going to uh, recover more. So then you've also got um, the carbohydrate gels, which I mentioned earlier. They come in like a little foil tube packet sort of thing. Um, and they can be consumed during or after an event. Um, and they're basically there to replenish lost fuel stores. So basically an athlete will um, either consume that during or after an event, but they will generally have uh, water with it, not a sports drink because that's too much carb, but um, generally just water to help aid that absorption. Right, so protein, um, that is a basic building block for all of life. Um, it helps your cells grow and repair, whether you do exercise or not, you need protein. 
um, should make up about 15% of the diet. It depends on what sort of athlete you are. Obviously, it would need more if you're a bodybuilder or someone um, that's doing a lot of strength training. And there's two types of protein. There's essential amino acids, and they're the ones that our bodies can't make. Uh, so we, na- we need to get them from our diet. And there's non-essential amino acids, and they're the ones our body can make. And they're, ba- they're made from um, construction of other amino acids. So basically, um, if you have um, protein uh, after an event, it helps obviously with that carbohydrate um, re- uh, restoring, sorry. And also it stops or it helps counteract uh, the muscle being broken down as a result of micro traumas. So we all know that obviously after using muscles, they form um, tiny tears called micro traumas. The way they build up is they repair those cells. There's a bit of scar tissue in there, but to do all that, you need the protein. So protein should be consumed immediately after the event um, in order to counteract that. Um, And then also we sort of find that proteins um, tend to be bulky sort of foods like meats and eggs and that sort of thing. Um, So it's better to have or it's easier to have a meal that's not too heavy, but that will combine the protein and the carbohydrate. So, for example, if you have um, a milk drink after the event that has your protein um, because it's an animal product and then if it has some um, sugar flavoring or something in it, then that's your carbohydrate as well as the lactose. That's also carbohydrate. So that's a really good way of combining the protein um, and the carbohydrate together after an event. All right, there's also the concept of protein supplementation, um, which is really popular among strength training athletes and bodybuilders. Now, I'm not saying that it doesn't work, um, but the scientific community suggests that there needs to be a lot more research done um, into how much it actually helps athletes. Um, And there's a few couple of, uh, sorry, there's a few different forms that Um, protein supplementation takes and generally um, it's in powders and in whey powders so whey is a milk based protein Um, obviously people that are lactose intolerant or um, intolerant to dairy products there's other sorts of proteins out there so um, from soy and and nuts and those sort of things Um, but in this case we're just going to look at whey protein so there's whey isolate protein which is exactly what it means the whey is isolated away from the fat and the lactose so all the fat and the lactose has been taken out and it's basically uh, the most pure form that you can get and it's the highest quality product as well and then you've got the whey concentrate protein which just means it's um, not on it hasn't undergone um, is such a heavy refining process as the whey isolate so there's still some of the fat and the lactose left over so it's not as pure it's still a okay quality product um, but it's not as good as the isolate protein and then you've got the combined whey isolate and concentrate and so that's just a combination of the previous two all right so fats um, there's not a lot of information regarding fats and diet um, in terms of athletes there's it's basically an understanding that um, it's an essential nutrient you should have or it should make up about 20 to 30 percent of an athlete's diet um, and it's there for um, submaximal activities and activities when you have plenty of oxygen present um, it is essential for everyday life um, anyone who strips fat out of their diet is um, asking for trouble basically because they will find that they have a reduced ability to absorb vitamins a d e and k so they're all fat soluble vitamins they won't um they won't dissolve into other products i suppose or other um, body tissues they need fat to carry across into the cells Um, and also fat is a really important uh, makeup of um, particular hormones as well so uh, we could find that someone has impaired hormone functioning or perhaps mood swings when they've cut the fat out of their body completely Um, It also helps um, support the body when it is sitting still and you've got plenty of oxygen. It's not using um, carbohydrates or proteins. Instead, it's going to rely on fats. So you need to have fats in the diet. Um, Depending on the particular diet, though, it doesn't always have to be 20 to 30 percent. All right. So just in summary, uh, you're looking at carbs, fats and proteins as the food fuels. And you need them in various quantities. So 65, 20 and 15, just as a rough guide. 
Um, the GI rating of a food will determine if it's appropriate to be consumed before, during or after an event. Um, so generally we're looking at high GI during and after and then sort of low to moderate um, before. And then carbohydrates should be consumed with protein um, to help absorption or to increase the insulin response, with, which then leads to storage. Um, carbohydrate gels and high GI sports drinks aid in carbohydrate replenishment um, during and after an event. So they're two key um, sort of products that athletes will rely on. That's why there's such a big business in them. And then post-event meals, you're looking at having um, lightweight meals combined with uh, protein and carbohydrates between 15 to 30 minutes afterwards to um, or after an event to maximize um, the replenishment of the fuel stores. And you don't want to disrupt digestion. Some people end up with bloating if the meals are too, too heavy. So thanks for watching. Um, the next video will be looking at hydration techniques.